1983, a little girl goes missing, but no one seems to notice. On February 28, 1983, two young men exploring the basement of an abandoned building on Clemens Avenue in St. Louis make a horrifying discovery. Lying there amongst the rubble is the body of a female, wearing only a yellow sweater, but nude from the waist down. She was on her stomach, and her hands were bound behind her back with a red and white nylon rope. Her head was missing. When the medical examiner arrives and they turn the body over, they realize that this is the body of a little girl, not more than 11 years old, and she's died in an unspeakable manner, and no one is looking for her. Identifying a body without a head would be difficult, and after combing through school records and missing persons reports, police come up empty-handed. In 1983, DNA isn't even a thing. Officials wait nearly a year to bury her in the hopes that someone will come forward and claim her. When no one does, detectives and grave diggers lay her to rest in Washington Park Cemetery. Police were looking for a needle in a haystack. How can you find a killer when you don't even know who the victim is? Law enforcement had few details to go on. The rope, the sweater, the victim had on nail polish in two different shades, but those clues didn't really amount to much in 1983. Even less in 1990, when the rope and sweater are lost. 30 years after her death, in 2013, officials decided to exhume Jane Doe St. Louis, also known to the people of the city as Precious Hope, in an attempt to gather more evidence. Unfortunately, Washington Park Cemetery had fallen into such a state of disarray that the monument that local volunteers had bought for her had just been placed over a random grave. After going back through the photos of the funeral, detectives were able to pinpoint her burial site and finally had her exhumed. Hope would have probably been born around 1973, and the new tests indicated that she was likely from the southeastern United States or Texas. The yellow sweater that Hope wore had the tag cut out of it. Occasionally, this is done when you buy children's clothing secondhand. There was initially some speculation that it was done by the killer, but it seems unlikely that they would go to the trouble of cutting off her head, but leaving her sweater and just taking the tag. Lack of blood at the crime scene indicated that this was probably a secondary site and she was actually murdered and decapitated somewhere else, likely two to five days before her body was found. The fact that no one came forward to claim Hope's remains may indicate that her parents or caregivers were responsible for her demise. It is also possible that they were deceased or incapacitated and Hope was being looked after by a relative or in foster care. If you have any information about the identity of Precious Hope or her killer, contact the St. Louis Homicide Unit. If you think you could be related to Hope, please submit your DNA to GenMatch.